call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. The time is now 6 o'clock. Uh, please join us as we rise. Mr. Husbands will lead us in our pr prayer, and I will lead us in our pledges. So desire, please join me in prayer. Bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings that you bestowed upon our community and on our district. Father, we thank you for each individual here tonight and the, the schools and the district that they represent, the jobs that they accomplish. Father, we thank you for the respite that they get from such a difficult task each and every day. Continue to bless them and keep them safe in this off period and, and hope that They'll come back renewed and with vigor to accomplish our mission. But Father, be with this board tonight as we contemplate the business of this district. See that everything that we do say is in your will and for the betterment of this district and for your good. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now the Texas Pledge. Honor, Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 2A, Special Board Recognition. 2018 UIL class 6A girls 3,200 meter state champion. <laughs> Dr. Noll. All right, this time we'll ask Tommy Johnson, our principal from Oak Ridge High School, to come forward and introduce us to our state champion. Good evening. Thank you, uh, President Bush, members of the Board of Trustees, and Dr. Noll. Tonight I would like to introduce the head track coach at Oak Ridge High School. This is Sterling Beck's first year at Oak Ridge, and he has done an outstanding job for us. He has 12 years of coaching and experience in high school, is married, uh, two grown sons. In his first year at Oak Ridge, our team has finished second district and third in the area. And it's my pleasure at this time to introduce Coach Sterling Beck. Coach Beck. I want to introduce uh, Sophie Laswell to you. Uh, just a brief story. Um, Sophie, I met her back in August of last year. Uh, we had already been practicing for a couple of weeks, and one of the girls said, there's a young lady that would like to uh, try to run cross country. And so I said, yeah, bring them on. We're, we're open to everybody trying. And so Sophie came along, and the first day of practice, uh, she ran kind of right with my top girls. We were doing a lactate threshold a workout and that's that's pretty difficult and Sophie was kind of right there and I thought wait this might be interesting <laughs> and we did that same workout the next week and she was leading the workout and so <laughs> I knew right away that I had something special I don't know that she knew that yet uh, but I, I understood what was going on and so uh, Sophie's just a great uh, addition to Oak Ridge High School she's a very giving person uh, when track came around, uh, she won every 3,200 meter race for the season. Uh, her times improved uh, by five and 10 seconds uh, each time she ran. She was the district champion, area champion, regional champion, and finally with a 1024 uh, state champion, really represents Oak Ridge High School. Uh, and I'm very proud and pleased to have known her and been able to work with her. several of these tonight so I'll just be quick it's always amazing to me that we're in a school district that has state champions year after year after year after year after year 
but it also is always amazing that we have students that come up here and with great achievement and great success in life. We know that you'll go on, Sophie, and do well in all that you do, and we just want to say congratulations. Items 2B through E, I'm going to go ahead and turn over to you, Dr. Knoll. Absolutely. And we'll ask uh, Mr. Greg Colson, our former principal of the Woodlands High School, to come forward and introduce these state champions. President Bush, members of the board, Dr. Knoll, it is again a pleasure to be here tonight to recognize some very outstanding young people uh, who do a lot of great work and their coaches who represent our school and our community so well. At this time, I'd like to introduce our head boys track coach, Juris Green, to introduce our team. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Dr. Noel, I'm going to be one of the probably last people to say congratulations. Thank you. Uh, good <laughs> job. Uh, but I, I say this every time I'm here, and, and I'm one, I'm happy to say that I can say that every time, I'm, but this does not get old. Um, every state championship that we've won, they have a life of their own, and, and this year notwithstanding, um, I was here one year ago for a 2017 track state title, back again for another one. This one felt different because we had a big target on our back, we had a lot of returners, uh, and um, for those kids that qualified for the state meet to do what they did in the fashion that they did it, eight uh, events we qualified, uh, nine scoring opportunities, all nine score. Um, at the Texas State Meet, which is the best high school track and field uh, meet in the country, uh, says something not only about the kids with their high talent levels, but their work ethic and the coaches who stand behind them and aren't afraid to push them. And now I'm, to say that I'm in the track and field heyday at the Woodlands High School uh, over the last 40 years, uh, it's, it's a big pinch me moment and something that I remind my old man of often. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, we had... Uh, 100 meter state champion back to back, Keyshawn Carter ran 1022. He's one of the fastest kids in the country. Uh, our 4x1 ran the fifth fastest time in the United States ever run by a high school team, 3998. We had a 4x2 break a national record in 123.25. Uh, we had a third and a fifth in the, in the discus, a second in the shot, a fourth in the 3200, a sixth in the high jump, a sixth in the, in the 1600, and all that added up to 68 points. Uh, and our, as a school, 22nd state title. Um, so I'm very happy to, to represent um, and uh, look forward to the future and being back here uh, as soon as I can. Uh, <laughs> our, um, many of our, our, our team members are already gone yeah. uh, to their respective colleges for um, football prep and orientation and whatnot. Keyshawn Carter's up in Lubbock already. Um, Ethan Bonner is already at Stanford. Um, Jake Lanier is at orientation at A&M. Um, <laughs> Uh, you can't get away from that, can you? Can't you knew that was uh, coming, sure. DA is getting ready for, uh, for his um, leaving uh, to Blinn. Uh, and so I have a, a couple of athletes here, Patrick Pippery and uh, Sean Stavanoa, are throwers, as you'll be able to tell, if, if they would like to come up. <laughs> the, the coaches who I'm so proud to work with every day, Sean Hamilton, our sprints coach and horizontal jumps. Chris Bales, our relays coach. Gary Madour, our throws coach. Mike Tolliver, our high jump and hurdles coach. And Robbie Dewitt, our pole vault coach. Coach Green, it's an understatement to say you had big shoes to fill, but it seems that you filled them well. <laughs> <laughs> so we just want to say congratulations to you student athletes that are here and also Coach Green and your team. Thank you for all you do for making our district successful, not only on the field of battle or the field of, of uh, uh, competition, but also in the classroom each and every day. We know how much you work hard to make these young men and young women 
uh, great men and great women. We just thank you and appreciate you very much. Thank you. We have an award here. It says the Woodlands High School Boys Track and Field 2018 6A State Champions. Congratulations from the Board of Conroe ISD and Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Null. Mr. Colson to come back for our next item. Item F. Yes. <laughs> President Bush, members of the board, Dr. Knoll, uh, another state champion from the 6A state track meet was Naya Harmon, a uh, discus thrower from the Woodlands High School, sophomore student. Uh, she is unable to be here tonight, as were the coaches, but I wanted to recognize her for her outstanding efforts. Uh, she works every bit as hard as the boys and is a true joy to be around, and she brings life to the track practices every day. <laughs> outstanding young lady. <clears throat> so item 2F is uh, Division One lacrosse. President Bush, members of the board, Dr. Knoll, uh, it's a... A really unique opportunity to stand before you today 21 years ago the lacrosse program started at the Woodlands High School and has been an outstanding program for the last 21 years uh, they have climbed the mountain many times and never quite got to the top uh, this year we were able to reach the top um, we have a lot of outstanding young men here with us tonight and their coaches I would like to recognize David seal who is a, a staff member who started the the lacrosse program 21 years ago he was unable to be here tonight uh, but a lot of the foundation came through David's efforts uh, at this time I'd like to recognize uh, and introduce the coach coach Keith Tintel if he would come forward and introduce the team well hey, hey we're real thrilled to be here for one so thank you a lot um, yeah it's 21 years ago the program started so it's been a long climb. Uh, you know, we had a bunch of seniors this year. Uh, I'll tell you the story that's been great about our senior classes. In, 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 when they were in ninth grade, we had eight guys up on a ninth grade team. We're supposed to be rebuilding that year. Uh, we went all the way to the championship game. Uh, we lost to a really good team, Highland Park, but we, you know, we were played out Round Rock in Austin. So for it to come full circle, sure enough, we're back in Round Rock and these guys were seniors. Um, and for us to pull it to pull it out, um, kids played fantastic. I'm sure you guys will like that we actually beat three Dallas teams to win the state championship. <laughs> they also, the Dallas teams have won the last 12 state championships in a row. So never mind, great for, for the Woodlands, but also great for Houston too. So, but for these guys to come back, uh, and we won, you know, we won in good fashion too. We beat Dallas Jesuit 11-4. Uh, and then in the uh, semifinal game, we beat Highland Park 10-6. And then in the championship game, we beat St. Mark's 10-6. So just a great, great around, great job for these guys. So uh, just on a, on a note, as far as our, our guys, we had uh, 10 All-State guys. We had 13 guys that made district awards. Uh, we also had three All-Americans this year as well. So as far as individually, these guys are, are, are a great crew. And we got a lot of these guys uh, are also going to play in college, playing in the next level. So I'd like to introduce these guys. First guy, I'd like to bring my assistant coach up, and that's Coach Al Christopher. I think we got three of our captains. Definitely like to bring them up first. Ramsey McCreary, Quinn Benny, Christian Starkey.
Mitch Williams, Nate Drickemer, Jason Krosowitz, Jack Barron, Ben Langston, Hunter Reitz, Dylan Binney, Sam Sullivan, and James Penley. Fine job, fine young men. So it took 12 titles for the Dallas schools, and we finally took it away from them. So we're expecting 12 now. <laughs> Come down here. We just want to say on behalf of the board and uh, superintendent, congratulations for a job well done. And we're very pleased with you and excited for your futures. Congratulations. Item 2G, Special Board Recognition, Ambassador Awards. I'll ask Marshall Schroeder, our Director of Custodial Maintenance, to come forward and introduce our recipients tonight. President Bush, members of the board, <laughs> Dr. Noll, uh, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce to you the 2018 Maintenance and Custodial Ambassadors of the Year Awards. Uh, first from our North Maintenance Area, Elio Yanez, please come to the front. Elio has been with us since January of 2000, or excuse me, 1999, uh, athletic groundsman. Uh, Elio takes, works very hard to make sure athletic fields are always in good shape and they're ready for the games. From South Maintenance, Michael Cowell uh, started with Conroe ISD in August of 2015. He's an evening shift journeyman electrician. Uh, Mike is a, de a dependable employee who works hard at completing whatever task is put in front of him. He makes good decisions and wants what is best for the district. Michael Cal. <laughs> From South Custodial, Lai Sim Chi been with the district since February of 2008. Uh, she works uh, swing shift at Kaufman Elementary. She has a great attitude and, and uh, it shows through her actions and her smile and she's always willing to go the extra mile. Why since she From our North Custodial, Maria Ayala has been with the district since October of 2000. Um, she has worked on night teams at several campuses in 2014. She became an opener at Giesinger Elementary. 
she's dependable, hardworking, and willing to assist wherever and whenever she's needed. Mm -hmm. Maria Yala. The assistant director wildcard is Julian Guna. Julian's been with the district since August of 1996. Julian, is, Julian has served in the custodial department as a custodian, a member of the moving crew, and his current position moving crew lead. He's determined to get the job done no matter how long it takes or how, it, and does it with a great attitude. Uh, Julian Guna. So before I read this next name, I'd like to provide mm -hmm. a public service announcement. It <laughs> might get a little bit loud. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> Director's wild card, Mr. Jimmy Atkinson, a.k.a. Yeah. Mr. Jimmy. <laughs> As you can see, he got his own cheering section. Uh, Jimmy has been in Lamar since 1985. He's a part of the Lamar family. He, uh, many would say he's a legend at, Jamar, at Lamar. Yes. Um, he's appreciated uh, by the staff, parents, and children. And I'll tell you a funny, um, probably a year into my tenure here, uh, staffing was kind of tough. So Jimmy's always been a, a, a crossing guard at Lamar. And so we were tight for custodians. So we kind of moved him from that position. And I received a call the next morning from our former superintendent <laughs> and said that Mr. Jimmy uh, was a crossing guard when his daughter Brooke was at Lamar, and he would always be a crossing guard. <laughs> I said, yes, sir. <laughs> Nothing's changed, Marshall. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you guys truly are unsung heroes of the district. Uh, we take our facilities for granted, our grounds for granted, but um, we all know that those facilities and grounds you guys maintain on a daily basis are on par with any Ivy League co college. So that's a testament to how well you guys do. Marshall and your team, you guys are phenomenal, and the district really appreciates you guys. And, and don't ever think that your job goes unknown. I mean, it's just phenomenal. I go in those facilities, and I can't say enough of them. I mean, you, you, you can appreciate that when you come from, you know, different dis school district, different, you know, demographics. So when you guys should go up to CISD and you walk in these facilities, it's always top notch. The grass, the grounds are always top notch. So you guys are definitely doing and going above and beyond the call of duty. So we really appreciate that. Great job, Marshall. And team. invite the cheering crowd that came from each of the schools to join us in the picture outside after the awards. <laughs> And our last special recognition, item 2H, National Integrated Pest Management Star certifi uh, Certification, Dr. Knoll. Dr. Chris Hines will present this item. Good evening, President Bush, members of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Knoll. Uh, it is truly an honor to be able to lead off the anchor leg of this celebration uh, series tonight. And uh, with us we have um, this evening a special presentation uh, to our um, integrated pest management team. 
The Conroe Independent School District is one of four districts in the state of Texas to receive the Integrated Pest Management STAR certification from the IPM Institute of North America for consistent exemplary marks on the Institute's 37-point evaluation. And, uh, you know, before we um, introduce our, our presenter, I did want to acknowledge our uh, members of that team that are here with us this evening, and they'll, they'll come up um, in a moment. Um, in fact, they can just come up now because uh, we're going to talk about them. Uh, our uh, maintenance coordinator, John Brown, uh, our IPM, our integrated pest management coordinator, Mr. Ray Brown, uh, pesticide applicator, Keith Murphy, and Gilbert Pacheco, uh, also pesticide applicator. And um, IPM is the practice of combining pest control strategies for minimal or zero pesticide use. And uh, with us this night, tonight is Janet Hurley, Extension Specialist from Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service uh, School. And she's presenting um, this special recognition this evening. So I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Hurley. Got it. First of all, before I start, I've got to give a props to the people who were just up here before because without the grounds and the maintenance people, IPM doesn't succeed. Mm -hmm. And what I really have got to say is I'm so excited to be here because I've known them for a long time and I do have a prepared speech and I'm gonna kind of bore you guys with this for just a second because mm -hmm. this is important. Because in 2015, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, which is part of the A&M system, received a grant from the Southern IPM Center to oversee a school IPM workgroup project to measure the cost of integrated pest management. Now, for this project, our team of specialists from Texas, Florida, Alabama, Maine, Arizona, California, and the IPM Institute of North America developed a set of questions to measure the overall adoption of IPM and I'll explain more about integrated pest management, and to see how schools were actually doing. Well, these questions, when they were compared to this IPM STAR certification, we realized, wow, we already have got these wonderful schools. Why don't we just do one thing more? Why don't we recognize them with this STAR certification? Well, as um, you just heard, it's a 37-point evaluation. It's more than 37 points, okay? I, these gentlemen will tell you that it was more like going to the doctor and having the worst physical of your life, okay, because I come in and I go through everything. But integrated pest management is a decision-making process aimed at mes minimizing pesticide hazards while effectively preventing or eliminating pests. School district staff practicing IPM first assess pest levels, building conditions, factors in influencing pest introduction before acting. They rely on proving sanitation, hence the custodial people, exclusion, why we need maintenance, and staff teamwork, why we need all the teachers and everybody else helping us out, to combat these pests rather than a routine pesticide application. Now, in 1995, the state passed the law that required all schools to adopt IPM. However, before the law was actually adopted, in 1999, 1989, excuse me, Conroe ISD, like several other school districts, was going through some changes. And at that time, Jack Furby was y'all's maintenance director, and Ray Brown was just this maintenance guy, okay? He was just a maintenance guy, and a couple of years younger. But at that time, there was a parent by the name of Rebecca Perella, and she, you know, she, somebody remembers her. And, um, <laughs> She forced the district to adopt IPM because her daughter was chemically sensitive. The interesting thing is Conroe ISD became the model for the state, which you guys probably don't know about. But by that first year, you went from a pilot to every school being adopted. Interesting enough, in the late 1990s, Consumer Union came along and wrote this very scathing um, report called Pesticide Report Card. Texas schools score from A to F in the Integrated Pest Management Program. Conroe ISD was one of the seven, and they got a D. And it was because they were using what they were calling then red category products. It was a herbicide with a warning signal word. Well, at that point, um, Mrs. Perella found out and came back to the school board to see what they could do. Well, ironically, I was hired about the same time, and I interceded. I remember meeting Ray, oh gosh, I would think it was a, 
it was a golden corral or something. It was before, you know, Conroe had all this mall stuff. And we sat there and we talked about y'all's program. And over time, we realized Conroe was doing the right thing. They just needed a little extra help. In stepped AgriLife Extension. We've been called many names. And over time, we not only promoted Ray to the current position of IP, lead IPM coordinator, but you also hired Gilbert and then we hired Keith. So this program responds to 54 campuses, 14 additional 50 facilities, and 55 athletic fields. This isn't an easy task. I know this because of what I do statewide. What I am so excited to do is to recognize Conroe ISD with a plaque that the board can actually display that says, and John, come here. <laughs> you get to hold the plaque, okay? And then for the, each of the applicators, Mr. Ray Brown, because I wanted to make sure you got this before you retire, because he keeps threatening. <laughs> Gilbert. Jacko and then Keith Murphy. Now I have to recognize one other member that's in the audience taking pictures. Dr. Paul Nestor, without <laughs> Dr. Nestor's help, y'all would have been struggling with the Tawny Crazy Ant. And thanks to Dr. Nestor's work, he was actually able to work with the district and actually help us determine what are the best appropriate methods. And before that, it was the dastardly fire ant. So without further ado, I applaud your IPM team. This is a great recognition. You're one of the few schools in the country that can be recognized on this. And it just, break, it just makes my heart proud to come to <laughs> Conroe ISD. Just, just real quick on behalf of the uh, the board and uh, everybody at CISD. I mean, I, with all the athletes here earlier, I was trying to think of a good coach's term. To how how tough are, are we that we have a team like y'all uh, that is that is leading this program? I mean, we are just blessed to have each and every one of y'all. I actually did a little research because I wanted to know what I was talking about and. They deal with the TDA, the Texas Department of Agriculture. There's continuing education. There's a lot of statutory requirements, all of the red, green, yellow products, all of that. I looked into that, and you guys are impressive. And as each of these young athletes would attest, that every single member of a team plays a very important role in the success of the overall district and the overall team. And you guys are that. Y'all play a very important role. We are so appreciative and we are so thankful and again blessed to have you on our team and uh, very impressed and I'm just, uh, uh, congratulations for this outstanding award. Thank you. Next item, Ms. Godfrey, has anyone registered to address the board? Yes. The next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. 
These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for their presentation and delegations of more than five must appoint one representative to present their views to the board. Ms. Godfrey, please call the first person who has signed up to address the board. Amy Hamrick. Good evening, Board, Superintendent. Thank you for letting me speak to you this evening. My name is Amy Hamrick. I live in Harper's Landing. I've been a resident of the Conroe School District for 10 years. My husband and I have six-year-old twins who just finished kindergarten at Powell. They're very excited to go into first grade in August. Um, I'm here tonight to talk to you about arming teachers in Texas, teachers and staff. I want to make it clear that myself, my family, and many members of our community do not want that to happen here in Conroe ISD. In response to the horrific shooting in Santa Fe, Governor Abbott released his Texas School and Firearm Safety Action Plan for Texas school districts that included the expansion of the school marshal plan. This allows teachers or other staff to carry guns inside our schools. For the safety of our students and educators, we urge you here at Conroe ISD to not adopt that policy. And in fact, I would ask that you would make a resolution formally announcing that you will not adopt that policy and that you're officially rejecting it. Guns simply do not belong in our schools. They are designed to be a place of safety, sanctuary, and learning for our children. The mere presence of guns in school adds an unpredictable element that puts educators and students at increased risk and layers even more safety concerns on top of the heavy responsibilities already placed on our teachers. There is no evidence that arming teachers will make schools safer. Arming civilians has been shown that it is not an effective way to stop active shooters. The FBI looked at 160 active shooter situations and only found one incident where an armed civilian successfully staged an intervention, and that civilian was actually a trained U.S. Marine. Research indicates that the presence of guns at school make children less safe. Irrespective of age, access to a firearm triples the risk of death by suicide and doubles the risk of death by homicide. There have already been incidences at schools around the country where guns have been found in unrestricted areas such as bathrooms. And in fact, a teacher in Maine, or excuse me, a teacher in Northern California accidentally fired his gun inside a classroom. Experts in education and law enforcement agree that more guns in schools can increase volatility and risk. The American Federation of Teachers, the National Education Association, and the Major Cities Chiefs Association have all expressed opposition to arming teachers. Governor Abbott included support of a red flag law in his plan that gives um, the community a way to address and identify dangerous individuals before they commit acts and have their guns temporarily removed until the situation can be resolved. I urge you, um, well, I urge our Texas legislature to pass those type of laws, but I urge you to recommend those laws um, to Governor Abbott and to, again, to um, formally renounce the Marshall Plan and officially say that you will not be arming our teachers or our staff here at Conroe ISD. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. <laughs> Does anyone else? Ms. Godfrey, please call the next person. Dr. Enrique Rosero. Good evening. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, CISD is a jewel in our community. You have seen the great performance of our student athletes and our performance of our students. As trustees, you're entrusted with um, ensuring that our, that our children and our educators thrive, and you have the obligation to take the long-term view. And as trustees, you have also the luxury of having that relatively long tenure to have that perspective. As you discuss the budget for this year, I find signs of concern. The state funding has gone down significantly. Only 38% of the cost of every student is covered by the state, down from 49% a decade ago. Seems like we are relying on increasing appraisals at the rate of approximately 6% per year. 
and this is clearly unsustainable. I am a parent that believes that education is a priority and I am prepared to pay for it. But just this past weekend, a tax ratification election failed at client ISD. Apparently for some parents, nine cents on hundred dollar valuation is too much. So it seems appropriate that you consider the real reasons of the likely tough financial situation that is looming. It seems like it's time to engage with our legislators and demand adequate funding for our schools. I'm especially concerned when I see a new crop of extremists being nominated to contest for state representatives. Politicians that have been deemed by both educators and parents as enemies of public education. Politicians whose campaigns are bankrolled by special interests like Empower Texans focusing on promoting private enterprise at the expense of the public trust. They have already started peddling misinformation, saying that administrators, the Cadillac salaries of the administrators and the bloated bureaucracy are to blame for this situation. I want to urge you, urge, urge you to act as trustees and refute this false statements, and continue to ensure CISD is viable and continues to thrive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item three, the consent agenda. I have heard no request to remove anything. I move we approve as presented. I second. All Motion. those in favor? <clears throat> Motion passes. Item 4A, consider application to the Texas Education Agency Hurricane Recovery Federal Grants Program. Dr. Knoll. Dr. Hines. Again, good evening, President Bush, members of the board, Dr. Knoll. Um, tonight, hearing uh, to request uh, your authorization to apply um, for the Texas Education Grant funding related to cost incurred by the district as a result of Hurricane Harvey. The, there's a series of grant applications that are coming out. They're just coming out. And uh, so we'll, we'll know we'll have a short timeline. So we're asking permission to apply. There's really going to be, I think at this point, we're aware of three. Um, the hurricane uh, grant for restart. There's one for uh, impact aid. For displaced students and another one that will be coming out we believe for homeless children in the youth program and those uh, we're, we're not totally up to date on what all the conditions will be or what all the eligibilities we're starting to do our planning now um, for this grant process the first grant we did receive an allocation amount of uh, we could be eligible up to 2.77 million dollars so it's a pretty good amount uh, so we wanted your permission and approval to start working on applying for those grants. Thank you, Dr. Hines. Uh, motion? Well, I, I move. Okay. And I'll second. All right. Thank you. Questions? My, my question is, uh, you, I, I know that the grants are, are not necessarily spelled out yet, but uh, will you come back to us if there's matching requirements? Is that yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. Absolutely. And uh, right now, the first one, there's no indication on this one that there's any matching grant that we received on the first one. We haven't received all the information yet, and so there's still some uh, kind of, it's kind of one of those uh, unfolding very rapidly, and I think they're answering questions as districts submit them, and then they were, we're seeing the responses. So um, we'll get better answers here in the next couple weeks. Thank you very much. And Dr. Hines, did, did you say, I don't recall, is this a reimbursement grant? Uh, do we have to document funds we spent, or is this funds that will be directed to all, certain All of the above. Uh, That's so what I so yeah. I uh, the first grant that. that we do have some information on is goes from the date back to August of the hurricane going forward for two years. And so that is the one challenge that we know, and we're doing a needs assessment right now. We're doing, we have a team working and we're planning of, of possible which grant might be the best place to go. We're also doing needs assessment, looking at the schools that have been most impacted in terms of their students and what services we might be able to provide to support them. But the reality is it's a grant that will end in two years and we have to plan accordingly. And so, you know, there's no doubt that we'll probably add some positions, but those will be, we're, we're, we've done that in the past. We've added grant funded positions with the knowledge and they know up front that this 
this position ends in two years. Uh, so there will be um, some things that come forward. But to answer your question, yes, there is some there are some things that we're looking at and we're documenting. And if we have the right documentation, we can submit for reimbursement. Um, and then there will be some going forward services as well. Can you remind me also too? I believe you mentioned previously the number of students displaced that moved into our district as a result. Typically, in a year is yeah, and, uh, and I don't have that one. A thousand or yeah, we are, we are we finished the right? year right around a thousand homeless students. Homeless students are right. and uh, some of which were displaced from the hurricane and okay. some were not. Okay, but but what we saw was a big increase in our homeless population this year, which we just added another position. We, we made through the grant add another position. Um, and so uh, there's some there's some opportunities coming forward. As I said, we're doing looking doing a needs assessment, looking at some opportunities to support some behavior training or some counseling um, and some other instructional support as well as transportation support, uh, health service support and some of those areas that we feel feel like there's a need. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other discussion questions? All those in favor? Motion passes. Thank you, Dr. Hines. Thank you. Item 4B, consider acceptance of the 2016 CTE Robotics Project and authorized final payment. Dr. Knoll. Easy Foster. Good evening, members of the board, Dr. Knoll. It's my pleasure to bring forward for your consideration and acceptance or approval as a completed project and uh, authorizing the final payment. Uh, this project is our 2016 CTE and robotics project, which helped us establish welding, uh, construction trades, cosmetology, and robotics at Candy Creek High School. It also helped us uh, increase our ability to have welding classes at the Oak Ridge campus, at the ninth grade campus specifically. The project is complete. We've been using it for the last couple of school years, and it's time to request your approval for the final payment. Okay. Motion so moved. Second. All right. Any discussion? I just have a comment. I think those are fantastic programs and uh, if for any of you have never seen the Candy Creek High School CTE programs they are phenomenal they're first class uh, our district spent a lot of money in preparing those but what it does is it prepares students for a future in many different areas that can allow them to earn a living wage not just surviving but they can actually thrive and I'm all certainly in favor of it well, and I have to get hats off financially. I noticed there was some substantial savings compared to what we expected in the final payment. So thank you for that and for all the work that I know everybody puts in on that. So all those in favor? Motion passes. Thank you. Item uh, 4C, consider acceptance of the 2016 life cycle project and authorized final payment. Again, I'd like to bring forward for your consideration approval of a completed project and authorize the final payment. This project is our 2016 life cycle project, which is life cycles are projects where we replace things that wear out over time. <clears throat> this particular project focused on uh, many things throughout the district, but major scopes work happened at Runyon Elementary where we did a complete air conditioning and mechanical systems upgrade to that building. We also replaced the entire roof uh, at Caney Creek High School, which brought around uh, some new color, new life to that campus. Mm -hmm. And we did turf replacement at Woodford Stadium. We did track improvements around the district. So it's stuff that we bring forward for you to consider for approval each year. This project is also complete, and it's time to authorize final payment. We're requesting your approval to do so. So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor? Motion passes. Thank you. Capital improvement update. Mr. Foster. At this time, I want to bring you up to speed on what we've got going on for as far as capital improvements throughout the district. So I'm going to start with Grand Oaks High School, which is scheduled to open in August of this summer. Uh, so we're really excited to start showing you pictures of that building as it's coming near completion. So just this week, we received the uh, uh, the stuff, the documents from the fire marshal's office that allow us to occupy that building and use it for our beneficial use. Uh, so that process is underway now, so we will take full possession of it over the next couple of weeks, uh, and then it will be ours to use. You can see from this picture overhead, the landscape, the things around the building are coming along nicely. The grass is beginning to grow. It's beginning to take shape. Uh, on From this view, you can see the athletic venues are complete, and uh, just like the front of the building, 
the grass areas for the public use are, are planted and coming coming useful for us uh, as each day progresses. Rain like we've had over the last couple of days will make that site very beautiful very quickly. Inside the building, you see it is also cleaning up nicely. We've been populating it with per furniture over the last two months or so. Uh, so the, the process is cleaning up, the punch lists are being made, the, the contractors wrapping up work uh, as they exit out the back of the <coughs> athletics portion of that building. So this picture is actually from the athletics entry looking forward up Main Street toward the front door. And this is a, just a, a photograph down one of the corridors. It kind of gives you a, a flavor for what the personality of that school campus, school spirit is going to look like when it opens uh, in just a few short weeks. <laughs> At Catherine Johnson Clark Intermediate School, this school is also on schedule, scheduled to open in August, right alongside of Grand Oaks High School. Uh, <clears throat> the rain out there is affecting a little bit of our work at the front door, uh, but the masonry is essentially complete now. The plaster ceilings in that front door area are nearing completion, so the scaffold's coming down. So over the next two weeks, our sidewalks and entryways will be completed, and then that building will also wrap up uh, with landscape and things of that nature, which are already underway. On the inside of that building, you see the color and personality is starting to come alive there as they're putting the finishes on, beginning the final cleaning process. Again, we've been working with our purchasing department to load that building with furniture, and we're getting the admin areas getting ready to set up to host uh, Ms. Arduan, our new principal, and some other, other features as that building moves forward. Uh, you can see our gym is uh, pretty and vibrant, and our kitchen is up, up and almost ready to serve food out of. <laughs> Our life cycle project in 2018, so this is our project where we replace things that wear out over time. So um, our big focus of the work over the last couple of months has been on our natatorium. See from the inside picture, we've upgraded the lighting system to put in a more efficient lighting system. Uh, the major portion of that work was actually the air conditioning equipment that helps dehumidify that indoor space and keep it under control. That building did open back up to the public on schedule on June the 4th, uh, so it is open and operating for the public now. <coughs> Along with that project and several other projects throughout the district we've been replacing the roof at glenlock elementary we're doing track improvements around the district yeah. and all those projects are proceeding just as we would anticipate they would over this time so we're making good use of the time when the students and faculty are gone everything is on schedule and proceeding just as we planned at our stadium school board replacement project the school board at woodford stadium is complete and training on the operation of that system begins later this week over at moorhead stadium that uh, we're about a week and a half, maybe two weeks away from getting the electrical components finished that power that board. The guys are in the control room today, wiring up all the video equipment, things of that nature, and training on that system begins in about a week and a half uh, to train those people. So that project is on schedule, uh, just like we planned. Mm -hmm. uh, point backwards towards the uh, picture in the natatorium, the, the new video board for the natatorium has also been installed and is operational. Uh, that team's being trained uh, this week as well. Our safety and security project, which this is phase three, this will be the final phase of our bond, 2015 bond referendum, uh, where this summer we're attacking uh, 13 campuses, uh, improving the security vestibules as our summer project. So before summer, we were working on camera upgrades and things that you can't see above the ceiling. While the faculty and staff are gone, we're re realigning the reception desks at seven of the 13 locations and putting in the, the additional glass storefront so that we can create that secure vestibule at those locations. Uh, and as of today, about two-thirds of the desks are back in place and the glass has started at the front of those. So those, those progresses are, are, are progressing rapidly and are on schedule and actually a little bit ahead of what I was hoping they would be at this point. Right. So we're doing very well on, that, on those projects. At Flex 19, uh, we're heavy working in the ground. So we're building the foundations for that new elementary school that opens in August of 2019. So you can see from the flurry work on the job site in this picture, we're working on the drilled and underim foundations as well as the grade beams and other things that hold up all of our walls and infrastructure for that building. So it is progressing on schedule. We expect to see structural steel over the next 30, 45 days and things starting to go vertical uh, with the concrete slab and the steel coming up uh, as we progress through the summer. At Austin Elementary, we're doing a building addition so that we can take some of the older parts of that building out of service. You can see here the building pad is near complete, and over the next couple of weeks we'll start uh, tearing this place up like we did Flex 19, doing the building foundation, the gray beams, things of that nature. That project is on schedule. We're scheduled to open uh, in 2019 and uh, have everything ready for the kids to use and uh, leave that project. At Irons Junior High, we're doing a classroom edition. So the classroom edition is scheduled to open over the winter break uh, this coming uh, December. 
So you can see here are structural steels in place. They've been working uh, so far this summer, bringing the existing building utilities towards the new addition so that we can connect it all up and have it ready uh, on schedule. So right now it is progressing as we had planned over the course of the last several weeks, uh, just like all of our projects. At our new junior high school, it is much like the, uh, the state of Austin Elementary site. What you're looking here is a, is a shot of across our building pad. So the building pad is complete, waiting for the weather to come up so that we can start our drilled foundations. You're seeing the site infrastructure, so these are inlet boxes and manholes and things of that nature that help us with our storm and sanitary sewer and things of that nature. That work is in progress currently, and we're scheduled to open the new junior high school in August of 2020. At Conroe High School, we're doing a building addition that will help us do a major renovation on the main campus for the mechanical systems uh, upgrades. So basically everything above the ceiling in the, in the main campus. Uh, showing you a picture inside the existing library. So since school got out, we moved all the bookshelves and books and all the stuff out of the library, pulled the ceiling out. So uh, what, what you're looking at is a very, it's one of my favorite pictures of everything we've got because it's a clean superstructure. So the contractor is currently working putting all those systems back in place. So putting the ductwork back in, putting the piping back in so we can connect to the new systems that we've been showing you pictures of over the last several months. So this is one of the first areas that upgrade while the, while the students are gone. They'll focus back on the building addition, which is progressing nicely as well. And in the building addition scheduled to open over the winter break. So that when the students come back in the spring, they'll occupy those new classes, and then we'll be able to start working through the main building uh, during the school year, doing similar work like we're doing in the library this summer. We're scheduled to be on that campus through December of 2019. And that is my update. Thank you very much, Mr. Foster. Item 5A, consider approval of the 2018-2020 annual financial audit proposal. Dr. Knoll. Mr. Rice. Yes, good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. It is my pleasure to recommend the Board of Trustees approve the 2018 through 2022 annual financial report audit proposal. The proposal is to extend the relationship with Weaver and Tidwell to provide professional audit services to Conroe ISD for an additional five years. The audit fee will remain the same at $85,000 a year for the first two years of the proposal and increase by 1.5% for the next years to a total of $90,000 at, at the end of the term. The proposal was presented to the Audit Committee of the Board for their review and comments. The Audit Committee voted unanimously to recommend the approved proposal. I recommend your approval. So moved. I second. Right. Any questions, comments? I'd just like to state as chair of the audit committee, we've had excellent communications with Weaver and Tidwell. Uh, they do a really good job. And I think for the cost of the audit, our team, Mr. Rice and his team, really that team, is responsible for actually helping keep the cost of the audit down. Uh, I think it would significantly be higher if not for the work that they do as well as uh, Ms. Kima, uh, the work that you do in internal audit as well. So thank you for that. All those in favor? Motion passes. Thank you. Item 5B, financial reports. Mr. Rice? Yes, I'm here to present the financial statements for the district for the month of May. These statements will include the general fund, debt service fund, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. First statement we'll look at this evening is our balance sheet. Uh, the balance sheet includes our assets, liabilities, and fund balance. And each month we like to take a, a look at our cash and investments. And once again, we'll concentrate on our general fund. Um, we had cash on hand of $500, uh, bank deposits of $102,000. We have investments in our state pools of $92.9 million. We have a new item here, Wood Forest National Bank, uh, $30 million. We have an agreement with Wood Forest National Bank. They will pay us 25 basis points above the 90-day T-bill. And so we invested some money with Wood Forest National Bank. Um, that money is collateralized with a federal home loan uh, note, so we're collateralized with that. Um, our short-term investments, less than a year, $89 million. Our longer-term investments with TCG Investment Advisors of $51.7 million. For total cash and investments of $263.8 million. The next statement we'll look at is our income statement. 
Our income statement includes our revenues and expenditures for the district. Our revenues are broken down into three categories that include local and intermediate sources, state program revenues, and federal program revenues. We like to look at the detail of our local and intermediate sources. And we can see that by fund. If we look at the general fund and debt service fund, property taxes are the largest generator of revenues there. It's food sales and food service and it's premium contributions and self-funded insurance. We can also look at our year-to-date expenditures by major category for each of the funds. Our projected fund balance in the general fund, we're projecting an increase of about $1.6 million in the general fund. Uh, child nutrition, uh, our projected increase is, has decreased actually from last month and that is due to the uh, construction in the ki kitchens that y'all approved previously and we're going to use some of that fund balance to fund that. Our 2015 bond referendum status update, uh, we've currently expended and encumbered $464.9 million. We have an estimate to complete of $59.3 million, giving us a project forecast of $524.2 million, and that'll leave us with about $4.2 million worth of contingency. Self-funded insurance, uh, the month of May, uh, we had uh, total revenues of $4 million, expenses, 5.2 million almost. We had four claims uh, that were considered high claims. Three of those breached our stop loss of 500,000. Um, so, so pretty rough month. We had two preemie babies, and we, you know, unfortunately, we lost one of our teacher spouses throughout this. So, uh, a tough month. Uh, revenues uh, under expenses, one point, almost 1.2 million dollars. Uh, but overall, our plan has total revenues of a little over $36 million. We have expenses of $33.4 million, leaving us revenues over expenses of about $2.6 million. Um, participation at our wellness center, uh, we continue strong visits there, 475 for the month of May, total for the year 4,713. Once again, looking at our investments, total par value of the investments, $560 million. Uh, the yield of our pools, 2.05%, uh, the yield at Wood Forest National Bank, 2.03%, our shorter term investments, 1.81%, our longer term investments with TCG Investment Advisors is at 1.46%, giving us a combined portfolio with the 53-day WAM uh, yielding 1.95%, and our benchmark, which is the 90-day T-bill, is 1.89%. I know if you tried to add 25 basis points on there, the difference is Wood Forest does it on the first day of the month. So whatever the T-bill is on the first day of the month, uh, that is what they'll give us 25 basis points on. This is as of the last day of the month. That rate's rising. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you.